Hello and welcome to this lesson on micrometers in calipers, which is part of the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you can take measurements with micrometers and calipers. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand what a micrometer and what a caliper is, look at how to take measurements with micrometers and calipers accurately, and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using micrometers and calipers, which links into the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics Specification 3.5.1.3 Resistivity, as you need to be able to use a, a micrometer to determine the resistivity of a wire. So you must be able to you must be able to read a screw gauge micrometer to take readings from a wire. So, for example, you need to be able to measure the diameter of a wire with a screw gauge micrometer. Now, this device, like a vernier caliper, uses something called the vernier scale, and the value on the side refers can refer to the diameter in things of such like ten to the minus five meters. So, for example, here you can see that it's reading uh, twenty six from where it is across from the central scale, so therefore it's 26 times 10 to the minus 5 metres, which is 2.6 times 10 to the minus 4 metres in the correct standard form. Now it's important to note that a screw gauge micrometer is used compared to a ruler or a tape measure to measure something like the diameter of a wire because it has a higher resolution. So the screw gauge micrometer has a resolution of 0.01 millimetres, which is much higher than the resolution of a ruler or a tape measure. Now, a higher resolution lowers the uncertainty in your measurement. As a result, you will gain a more accurate value. Now, a micrometer is made up of two scales. You've got the main scale, which is on the sleeve or called the barrel, and you've got the thimble scale, which is the rotating scale on the thimble. Now, you'll find that when you're measuring things such as the diameter of the wire, you'll only really need the thimble scale because the main scale, the scale on the sleeve or barrel, will not be even needed to be used in this instance. Now the spindle and the anvil are clamped around an object being measured by rotating the ratchet of your screw gauge micrometer. Now this should be tight enough so that the object does not fall out, but not so tight that the object itself becomes deformed, because if that was the case, it would then affect the actual uh, value of the measurement you wish to take, lowering your accuracy. Now you would never ever tighten the spindle using the barrel, but only the ratchet, and this will reduce your over the chance of over tightening and crushing the object that you're measuring and the zero errors that could be caused. Now you can take a reading from a screw gauge micrometer with the following method. So you'll notice that the main scale has a division and each division represents 0.5 millimeters and then on the thimble scale each division represents 0.01 millimeters. So you would count how many divisions are you uh, use on your main scale. You would then count the value on the thimble scale and what you would then do is you would add that particular value from one to the other, but remember that on the thimble scale it's on 0.01 millimeters as opposed to the 0.5 millimeters that's on the main scale. So what you would have to do is multiply by 0.01. So in this instance, you can see on the thimble scale it's reading 17. So to get that into uh, millimeters, you do 17 times by 0.01, so 0.17 millimeters. If you want to get that straight into uh, meters, you can times it by 10 to the minus 5. And then obviously you would add your main scale value and your thimble reading together to get your final measurement. Now vernier calipers are another distance measuring tool that uses the vernier scale and it is used to measure very small distances such as the diameter or thickness of wires like a screw gauge micrometer. They can also be used to measure the length of small objects that you might have like a screw or a very small ball bearing or the depth of a hole created by like an impact crater for example. Now for a vernier caliper, the two upper or lower jaws are clamped around the object or the hole that is created. And then the sliding vernier scale will follow this and can be held in place using a lock and screw, as you can see in this particular diagram. Now you can take a reading from the vernier calipers by using the following method. So what you would do is you would secure your object in your air vernier calipers 
you then read off the centimetre mark to the left of the vernier scale. So you can see in this example it's one centimetre because that's the, fir that's the first uh, centimetre reading you're getting to the left of where your value lies, which is shown here as the red line. You then read off the millimetre mark to the left of the vernier scale. Again, uh, here it's going to be three millimetres. You then find the point where the line matches up with the line on the bar scale, so on your main scale and on your vernier scale, that the two line up. And and that tells you the number of tenths of a millimeter. So you'll notice here that you've got a uh, three because that's the red line as you can see here. That's where they're lining up. So therefore that must be 0 0.3. So therefore what you can do is you can add your readings together. So you have one centimeter because that is the biggest, uh, that's the next biggest centimeter reading to the left hand side of the marker. We then have three millimetres because you can see it is that is where the point is lining up with the millimetre. So you can see there that it's one, two, three past the one mark, so it's three millimetres. You then add 0 0.3 millimetres because that's where the vernier scale lines up with the main scale. So therefore we would get 13.3 uh, millimetres or 1.33 centimetres. Now, in general, the micrometer has a smaller measuring range than a vernier caliper. However, the micrometer has a better accuracy because it has a better or higher resolution than a vernier caliper. But the other advantage of the vernier caliper would be that the vernier caliper is quicker to use, whilst the micrometer is a bit more fiddly and involves rotating the thimble, and it's a more challenging device to use accurately because you can easily have a zero error on your screw gauge micrometer and and you also can actually indent the material that you're measuring the screw gauge micrometer if you over rotate it and it in fact actually clamps the object. So therefore, to take many measurements, a caliper may be easier to use. However, if you want a higher accuracy, a screw gauge micrometer is probably the device you would want to use. So if we were using a screw gauge micrometer to measure the diameter of a wire, you would see possibly a reading like this. So you'll see here that the, ma that the uh, thimble scale is lined up with the main scale at 15. So therefore, the answer for this would be 0.15 millimetres or in this case 15 times 10 to the minus 5 meters okay so therefore it's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters here is another example of a reading you can get on your screw gauge micrometer uh, when you're measuring the diameter of a wire you'll see here it's 27 times 10 to the minus 5 meters or 2.7 times 10 to the minus 4 meters in the correct standard form because the 27 on the thimble scale is lining up with the marker on the main scale now you'll notice in all these examples for the diameter of a wire that the main scale has no 0 0.5 divisions yet encountered so you don't have to add those onto the value. So in this instance you could think to yourself well what would the diameter of your wire be here? Well you'll notice here that the main scale and the thimble scale intersect at 3 so therefore this reads is 3 times 10 to the minus 5 meters and finally in this case what's going on here you can see here the intersection takes place at 38 so therefore we 38 times times 10 to the minus 5 meters or 3.8 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Once again, there's been no divisions on the main scale, so we don't have to add any values of 0.5 millimeters. In this instance here, where's the intersection taking place? Well, it's taking place at 29, so therefore it's 29 times 10 to the minus 5 meters or 2.9 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. What about in this example? Well, the intersection of the thimble scale and the main scale is at 36. So it's 36 times 10 to the minus 5 meters or 3.6 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Once again, we've had no air uh, divisions shown on the main scale. So there's no values of 0.5 millimeters have to be added. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? We looked at how you can use a micrometer to determine the diameter or thickness of a wire, which can be used to determine the resistivity of a wire. We know and understand how to use a wide range of experimental and practical instruments, equipments and techniques appropriate to, uh, to how to calculate this value of resistivity. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand what a micrometer and what a caliper is. Look at how to take measurements with micrometers and calipers accurately and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using micrometers and calipers. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on micrometers and calipers, which is part of the electricity topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.